Thank you very much, uh, Hillel, for the introduction. It is a distinct honor for the Human Rights Foundation uh, to participate, to be invited to moderate this, this short discussion and mostly to, to listen to Julieta and to Antonieta today. I just want to say that on behalf of HRF's chairman, Gary Kasparov, and HRF's president, uh, Thor Halverson, we're very, once again, proud to be here today. Uh, briefly, just mention that Venezuela is not uh, just a regular authoritarian government out there, of which unfortunately almost half of humanity uh, is, lives under, under authoritarian governments. Venezuela happens to be the most active authoritarian government in Latin America, the most active authoritarian government in the Western Hemisphere, one of the most active authoritarian governments around the world. It is a member of the UN Security Council. It is also a member of the UN Human Rights Council. And there, along with Cuba, exerts a great deal of leadership, uh, but of course of leadership on the wrong side, on leadership, on leadership towards evil, towards uh, systematic human rights violations. And, and that's a role that it has played, unfortunately, very effectively throughout its almost 20 years as, as a regime, six, 17 years uh, since Hugo Chavez uh, got to power in 1999 and then transferred it just a few years ago to Nicolás Maduro. It has exerted that same great deal of negative influence in Latin America and around the world. In Latin America, by sparing, by supporting the, the, the life of the longest totalitarian dictatorship in the continent, uh, the, the one uh, long-standing dictatorship in Latin America after, after the fall of the right-wing anti-communist dictatorships in the 70s. I mean, of course, Cuba. So it had supported Cuba. It's maintained the life of Cuba. And it supported other competitive authoritarian regimes in Latin America, namely Ecuador, Nicaragua, and Bolivia. So for the Human Rights Foundation, a human rights group, that focuses on authoritarian regimes. We're a human rights group that make a deal out of not, uh, not, not uh, spending our, our limited resources on democracies, because we believe that democracies, to the extent that they allow for NGOs to operate freely, to the extent that they allow for independent media to criticize the government, to polit to, they allow for, for political parties to associate and challenge power. To that extent, uh, our help is much less needed in those countries than it is under authoritarian regimes, whether they're fully authoritarian dictatorships, totalitarian or not, or whether they're competitive authoritarian, as Venezuela is a, is a leading example. And to close and make this pertinent to, to the presence of our two laureates today, I want to say that uh, Leopoldo Lopez, both Leopoldo and Antonio Ledesma, great leaders of the Mesa de la Unidad in Venezuela, which the, the the coalition of democratic parties there, uh, though they represent a great hope, not just for Venezuela, they represent a great hope for Latin America, and they represent a great hope for a, for a new wave of democratization that hopefully will happen around the world. And just as our chairman, former chairman, uh, the late Václav Havel, and, and his first time as a dissident and then as a, as a successful political leader spurred a wave of democratization around the world, we do believe that having, at some point, a transition to democracy in Venezuela led by Leopoldo Lopez and, that, and by Antonio Ledesma will lead to the same type of wave of democratization uh, all around the world. So it's an honor once again. And without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Antonieta Ledesma Capriles to, to address this, this great uh, audience. Thank you.